Hey guys, welcome to another Python tutorial for beginners. In today's video, we'll be talking about dictionary method. We've talked about a few of the methods in the dictionary video, but just for the sake of the completeness, we're going to go through all the dictionary methods in this video. So let's get into this. So the first method that we'll talk about is the get method. So the get method gets the value of an item using the key as the argument. So let me first create a dictionary here. So dict1, curly braces, first name, colon, Danny, and last name, colon, O. Okay, so now we have a dictionary class, which is assigned to the dict1 variable. Let's try to call the get method. So dict1.get, and we have to specify the key here. So first name, and if I wrap this statement into the print statement so that we can see the result, and if I run this, then you will see Danny here because the get method retries the value of the element that has a key of the first name. And we can also use the square bracket method that we have talked about. So we can do print dict1 square bracket first name and run it one more time. Then you will see the identical result as well. So the nice thing about the get method is that you can specify the default value. So if I just comment this and let's say that I'm trying to search for a key that does not exist in the dict1 that we have. So for example, if I put a nickname here and then just try to run it one more time, then you will see none here. So instead of throwing a key error, the get method returns none if the key that you are trying to search for does not exist in the dict1. So in here, we can actually specify the default value. So I can just say, this is the default value. And then if I run this one more time, then you will see that this is the default value printed out because the key nickname did not exist in the dict1 and so that python just threw this uh, default value as the result of this get method so now then let's try to compare the square bracket method versus the get method so both of them does the same thing meaning it retrieves the value using the key but the main difference here is that the get method returns the default value when the key does not exist but if you use the square bracket method it will return the key error complaining that the key does not exist so let me show you an example here here. So I can just uncomment this one more time and just copy the nickname here. So the nickname does not exist in the dict1. So let's see what happens if I run this. So as you can see, you see that this is the default value coming out from this print statement. And you see the key error nickname coming out from this uh, second print statement that we have because the key nickname does not exist in the dict1. Okay, so then let's move on to the next method, which is the key method. So as the name already says it, it returns the, all the keys that exist in the dictionary. So this method does not take any argument. So if I just call print dict one dot keys, and then parentheses and wrapping parentheses here. And if I just comment this, and just run this one more time then you will see all the keys first and last name in the list format uh, that exists in the dict1 encapsulated by the view object uh, provided by the dictionary class and we can do the same thing for the values so i can do print dict1.values parenthesis and if I just run this one more time, then you will see all the values, Danny and O. So Danny and O here are in the list format encapsulated by the view object saying dict values. Okay, so that was pretty quick. So then now let's move on to the from keys method. So this method creates a new dictionary given a sequence of items. So let me first create a sequence of item here. So I can just say keys, curly braces, A, B, and C. So I have a set data type with just a three elements, A, B, and C. Please note that this is not a dictionary data type because it doesn't have the key and value format. So what we want to do here is to use these three elements as a key to create a new dictionary. So I can do print, dict from keys and then put the keys as the argument and as you notice here i'm not calling this from keys method from the keys that we have but instead i'm calling from the built-in dictionary class and the reason why we are doing this is because the from keys is the method that binds to a dictionary class and the keys that we have here is not a dictionary data type but instead it is a set data type so in this case we want to trigger this method from keys from the dictionary class and then put the keys as the argument for this method so that's why we are referring to python's built-in dictionary class dict here and so if i run this you will see a b c as a keys for three different elements as we specified here and then the values are all set to none because we haven't specified the value just yet so let's also specify the values here so i can do values and set it equal to alphabet since our ABC is all alphabet. And once you create the values here, you can pass the values as the second argument in the from keys method. So like that. And if I run this one more time, then you will see ABC all having the same value alphabet as we specified here. 
So now then let's try to set the values to be a mutable object like a list. So I'm gonna replace this string with a list and set it one, two, three. And if I run this one more time, then you will see a new list with a A, B, C as a key and one, two, three in the list as the values for the older elements. So one thing to keep in mind about printing the mutable object as the values is that if you add a new element into this list, then the changes will be reflected in this uh, from case method. So let me show you an example here. So let's say that I'm adding a new element. So values that append four and then let me just append this after this print statement and then if I just print this out one more time right below words and then just run it then you can see the first print statement containing only one two three as the value in the list while the second print statement contains one two three four as the value because we just added a new element into this list object and since we are using the same object values to pass it to the argument in the from case method that's why the change is being reflected as you can see here Okay, so moving on to the next method, we're going to talk about the items method. So this method lists out all the keys and value pairs that we have in this dictionary. And you'll be using this method commonly when looping through the dictionaries, which we will talk more about it once we get to talk about the loops. So we have the dict1 here, and let's call the items method. So we can do print dict1.items parenthesis and if I just run this then you will see all items encapsulated within this uh, dict items view object and you will see them in a tuple format where key is specified as the first index and value is specified as the second index. Okay, so the next method that we'll be talking about is the set default method. So this method is a bit of dynamic method where if the key exists in the dictionary, then it returns the value. Otherwise, it inserts the key into the dictionary. So let me show you an example here. So I can call print dict1 set default and then put the first name as the argument, so first name. So in this case, the key first name exists in the dict1. So if I run this, it's gonna return the value then here because the key first name exists here. But what happens if I try to put the key that does not exist? So if I put nickname here, and then run it, then you will see none here and this is expected because the key nickname does not exist in the dict1. But the thing here is that if you try to print the dict1 once again right below the set before method and run it, then you will see none coming from this print statement and the second print statement will actually show a new element with a key of a nickname and value of none. So because the key nickname did not exist in the dict1, the set before method automatically inserted this new element with a key of a nickname to the dict1 with a value of none. And and so same as before, we can also set a value here. So if I just put comma here, and then the nickname is Dan, and if I run this one more time, then you will see a first name, last name, nickname with a value of Dan. Okay, so now let's talk about the copy method. So the copy method returns the shallow copy of the dictionary. But before I get into talk about the copy method, let me briefly show you what happens if I try to create a new variable and try to assign this existing dict1 variable to a new variable. So let's say that I have a new dict1 and set that equal to a dict1. And if I try to print new dict1 as well as the dict1 here, and run it, then you will see a two exactly same elements coming out, dict1 and new dict1, because we set the new dict1 equal to the dict1. And now if I try to call the clear method on one of the variable, so for example, if I call print new dict1.clear, and if I print the result one more time, let's see what happens. And if I run this, then you will see the dict1 and new dict1 coming out from this two print statement. And in this print statement, I call the clear method. So it returns none because the clear method does not return anything, but instead it deletes all the elements in the dictionary. So the thing here is the last two print statements. And as you can see, both the dict1 and new dict1 return the empty dictionary, even though I call the clear method on the new dict1. And this is an expected behavior because you are working on the same object. So even though you create a new variable called new dict1, one, this doesn't necessarily mean that you are creating a new object. Instead, this new dict1 is just referring to the existing object that we have created at the top, which is the dict1 here. And we can easily check this by calling the id statement. So we can do print id dict1, print id new dict1, 
and if I run this one more time, then you will see the two exactly same memory location, meaning that it is indeed a same object. So now let's try to replace this assignment that we have into the copy method. So what we can do here is that we can just say dict1.copy. So the only change that we did here is to call the copy method in the existing dictionary that we have, which is the dict1. And if I just run the same print statement that we have here one more time, then the first two print statements will show the identical result because we just called the copy method. And this print statement, the clear method, will return none because the clear method does not return anything. And this uh, third set of print statement, the dict1 actually returned all the values because we did not call the clear method. But the new dict1 is actually empty because we called the clear method on the only the new dict1 variable. And as you can see, the memory location is different, meaning that the dict1 and new dict1 are two separate objects. And that's why when you call the clear method on new dict1, only the new dict1 object is impacted by it, not the dict1. Okay, so the next method that we'll be talking about is the update method. So this is a pretty important method that you may be using frequently. So this method basically updates the value of existing element if the key exists. Otherwise, if the key does not exist, then it just inserts the new element with a new key value pair into the existing dictionary. So the update method takes one argument and this argument can be either a dictionary or a list of tuples or a list of lists with two elements. So let me first show you the example using the dictionary data type as the argument. So let's first create the dictionary here. Here. So this one is name equals to n plus equals to o. And if I just call the update method here, update, and then in the argument slot, I'm going to pass the dictionary data type and specify the key here, first name equal to new Danny. And if I just print the dict1 and run it, then you will see the first name with a new value, new Danny, and the value of last name stays as is because we haven't modified it. So then now let's try to call the update method using the key that does not exist in the dict1. So I can do dict1.update, call it braces, nickname, and then I say Dan. And if I print the dict1 one more time, and run it, then you will see the first name new Danny and nickname as Dan. So we have a new element in the second print statement here. And this update method functions exactly same as the square bracket method that we have talked about in the previous video. So let me show you that example real quick. So I can just do a dict1 square bracket, oops, and then specify the key first name and then set that equal to new Danny and then dict1 with a square bracket nickname which is a key that does not exist here and I can say Dan here and if I just print the dict1 one more time and run it then you receive the first name with a new Danny and nickname with a Dan so this element was just added into the existing dictionary that we have which is the dict1 and now let's try to use the list of two proofs as our argument for the update method so I'm gonna first comment this out and then let me just uncomment this and then delete the second line and in here instead of passing the dictionary data type I'm gonna pass the list of tuples and then the first index of the tuple will always have the key so I'm gonna specify the first name here comma uh, don't forget to put the comma here because this is a tuple so the first index will be the key and then the second index will be the value so the value is new Danny and then for the second tuple I'm gonna say nickname comma and then nickname is Dan so if I just print this one more time then you receive a first name as new Danny so it was changed by this statement here and then we have a one new element nickname with the Dan so then now let's try to use the list of lists which contains two elements as the argument for the update method so first I'm gonna comment this out and then let me write the new statement here so dict one update parenthesis list and another list here. So this next list only should contain two elements and then the first index will serve as a key, just like the tuple. And then the second index will serve as a value. So let me specify that here. So first name, comma, and new Danny. And another list here. And then in here, you can say nickname, comma, Dan. So if I print the dict one one more time, then you should be able to see identical result. So first name has a new Danny and you have a one new element nickname equal to Dan here. And there is actually one more way that I forgot to mention. So that one, we can just use a key value pair. So what we can do here is dig one dot update. And then in here, you just specify the key directly. So I can just say first name equal to new Danny and then nickname equal to uh, Dan and if I just print dict1 and just run it then you will see the exactly same result new Danny with a new element here.
Okay, so we are getting close to the end here. So we only have a three methods left, which we've already talked about in the previous video. So the first method that we're going to talk about is the clear method. And as the name says it, it clears out all the elements in the dictionary. So let me show you that example here. So dict1.clear. And if I just print the dict1 and run it, then you will see an empty dictionary. And the clear method does not return anything. So if I just uh, wrap this uh, statement into the print statement, then you will see none, meaning that it's not returning anything. So let's move on to the next method, which is the pop method. So the pop method takes key as the argument and removes that item. Also, it returns the value of an item that is currently being removed. So let me just copy this uh, dict1 to the bottom so that we can see it better. Let me comment this and put it here. Okay, so dict one the pop, and then you have to specify the key. So for example, if I want to remove this element that has a key of a first name, then you can just specify the key here, first name, and then if I just print the dict one. And also, since the pop method actually returns something, we can just set this equal to remove the item and print remove item here. And if I just run this, then you will see a Danny here because Danny is the value of an element that's currently being removed. And then you will see a one element in the dict one because the first name element was removed by this pop statement. So then what happens if I try to specify the key that does not exist here? So let's uh, do that example here. So we can do uh, remove item equal to dict one dot pop and then specify name name here. And then if I just print remove item as well as the dict one. And if I run this, then you will see a key error nickname saying that the key nickname does not exist here. So in order for you to actually prevent this error, you can actually specify the default value in the pop method. So in here, I can just say uh, this is the default value. And then if I just run this one more time, then you will see that this is the default value instead of seeing the key error. So the thing here is that the Python could not find the key nickname in the dict1. And that's why Python is just throwing this default value as you specified into the console. Okay, so then now let's move on to the pop item method. So I'm just gonna copy this and comment this out. Okay, and go below here paste it here. So the pop item method is similar to pop method but the difference here is that the pop method takes the key as the argument so that you can specify which element that you want to delete while the pop item method does not take any argument but removes the last inserted element by default and it returns the tuple that contains the key and value pair of an item that is currently being removed. So let me show you that example. So by the way let me just comment this out as well. So in here we can just say dict1 the pop item and just call that and then print one and if I run this then you will see one element with the first name Danny and then the last name element was removed because it was the last item and we can also try to see which item is currently being removed so we can just do remove item equal to the dict one pop item and then just print remove item and if I just run this one more time then you will see a last name O in a tuple format so the first index is always the key that's currently being removed and then the second index is the value that's being removed and just for your information if you are not seeing the expected results from the pop item like I'm showing you here please check your Python version because prior to Python 3.7 pop item was used to remove the arbitrary element from a dictionary so the behavior will be different if you are using the version prior to Python 3.7 Okay guys, that's it for this video. I hope that this video was helpful. We have talked about most of the important data types except set. So we'll talk about the set and its method for the next two videos. So please stay tuned. And if you have any questions, please comment down below. And if you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, please click the subscribe and like button. Thank you so much for watching and hope to see you in the next video.